All of you do it. Why? The intellect says, look, if you lose this job, these are days of recession. There are not too many jobs in the market. What will you do? How will you feed your children? The intellect has decided this is so important. So the mind says, but I wanted to see TV. Intellect says, khabardar, continue working. And all of you control the mind with the intellect. This is vivek. This is discrimination. This is being human. The Shastra say, Tattva vismaranat bhekivat. The moment you forget discrimination, humans fall to the level of animals. So our humaneness is in the utilization of that discriminative power of the intellect. Why are we attached? To rasgullas, jalebis, samosas? Because the intellect is not yet convinced they are not good for me. If the intellect could make the decision, the mind would come off. You don't believe it? Let me illustrate through a powerful example. There is one man who is hungry since four days, he has not eaten anything. Now after four days, imagine his senses, his mind, his intellect, all are tormented. Food, food, food. After four days, you bring for him on a silver platter, chappan vyanjan, 56 kinds of dainties. And say, sir, I heard that you are hungry. I have brought this for you, please. Enjoy yourself. Immediately the eyes have spotted the hot brown crusted gulab jamun and they have sent the signal to the mind. The mind is already hankering. The mind has inquired from the intellect. There is a hot gulab jamun there. Can we eat it? We are in great agony. The intellect says, I am also tormented. We are all in misery. Go ahead and eat it. The intellect instructs the mind. The mind has instructed the hand. Now he is picking up that gulab jamun. He is bringing it close to his mouth. In that situation, his senses are hankering for the sense object. And remember, he is hungry since four days. Do you think it's possible to create detachment in that person? Are Swamiji, impossible. How can it happen? It will take one second. Just shout out. What are you doing, good fellow? You wish to die? Die. The intellect has heard the word die. Immediately the paradigm has changed. Intellect says there's something wrong. Stop, tells the mind. The mind tells the hand, stop stopped. What's the matter? Why did you say that? Don't you know somebody has put poison in it? The worst, most powerful poison. If you take that, you'll be dead in five minutes. Now his intellect says, poison? Throw it away. It's harmful to you. The intellect has instructed the mind. The mind has instructed the hand and he's tossed away the gulab jamun. This person was hungry since four days. He was about to relish the cherishable object of the senses. And in a moment you created detachment. How? The power of discrimination. You want to check his detachment? Tell him, I will offer you one million dollars, please eat. He says, what will a dead man do with one million? I don't want it. You can't tempt him. Against the power of the intellect, you can't tempt him. Ask him, have you seen anybody put poison in it? No, no, no. Then my friend told me, is your friend an avatar of Harish Chandra? Is he the most truthful person in the world? No, no, I've caught him telling lies on a few occasions. Such an unreliable friend and his one sentence created detachment. 
Tell me, have you ever seen poison in your life? If I were to ask you all, 90% people would say, I have never seen poison. Why we don't have anything to do with it? So without seeing poison, one sentence of an unreliable friend created detachment. This is the power of the intellect over the mind. So God has empowered our intellect with this ability. That is why our scriptures repeatedly say, Look, you have to illumine your intellect with good knowledge. Shri Krishna says, Buddhi Yoga Mupashritya Machitta Satatam Bhava Buddhau Sharana Manvicha Kripana Phalahetava he says, Arjun, what I am teaching you in the 700 verses of the Bhagavad Gita is not karma yoga, jnana yoga, bhakti yoga, it is buddhi yoga. You say buddhi yoga. Swamiji, I have never heard of buddhi yoga before. You check the Gita. Sri Krishna has repeatedly used the word buddhi yoga. The yoga of the intellect. If the intellect is corrected, if the intellect is convinced on the proper values, your life will automatically go in the proper direction. Now, why do children go astray? You know, they fell into the wrong company and their friends convinced their intellect. Happiness is in taking drugs. Once the intellect became wrongly convinced, the life went into shambles. So, this going in the proper direction in life is a consequence of the proper values. What are values? Convictions of the intellect, yes. This is the proper way. In other words, the knowledge in our intellect is so important. That is why Sri Krishna again in the Gita you will notice, he keeps telling Arjun to surrender the intellect to him. He says, Mai eva mana adhatsva mai buddhim niveshaya Mai arpita mano buddhi Arjun surrender to your intellect to me. In other words, your intellect is saying, no, no, why this, why that? I want worldly things. But what I am saying, you go according to that. I am telling you, you are the soul. Accept it in your intellect. I am telling you, you are a part of God. Accept it in your intellect. If the intellect can be tied to the scriptures and the guru and the saint, our life becomes blessed. People ask Swamiji, what is the meaning of the Gayatri Mantra? One of the most famous mantras of the Vedas. And then there are so many esoteric, obfuscated explanations of the Gayatri. The simple meaning. Bhū Bhūvaswa. That Supreme Lord who is illuminating the three worlds, the whole universe, may he illumine my intellect with good knowledge. See, in this one prayer you have asked for everything, because if your intellect is illumined with good knowledge, you will automatically have the good values. And if you have the good values, you will take your mind in the good direction and you will become good. So, the first thing to learn in the science of mind management is that we need to empower our intellect with wonderful knowledge, with stimulating ideas, with uplifting wisdom. And that is what we shall be doing in this series. So, today we have understood the power of the intellect. 
Tomorrow we are going to discuss about the various defects in which this mind falls like anger greed hatred etc and try and determine why the mind goes into these unbeneficial entanglements and how we can extract it from there and put it in the proper direction